In this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the three main working areas and what they're used for so that you get a general idea of how Scrivener works. This is an excerpt from a full five hour Scrivener course. So I can't go into every detail here and I can't explain how each feature works. But by the end of it, you'll know what the different regions of the user interface are for and have a better idea of what your Scrivener software is capable of. The container on the left hand side is called the binder. It's a document browser that keeps all the files and folders pertaining to the project together in one place. Whichever template you start with, you'll find three important root folders which are necessary for all projects, so Scrivener blocks you from deleting them. You can rename them though and add subfolders and documents to them. The first one we're going to look at is the draft folder. Here's where you place all the documents that will be used in your compilation for export. This folder is unique in that it cannot accept independent photos or media documents within its structure. To add an image to a document in the draft folder, you store it somewhere on the outside of the draft folder, select the file you want to add it to, and drag it inside the text area in the editor. Just to keep things tidy, I'll drag the example into the trash folder. Now any folders that fall on the outside of the draft folder will not be included when you compile for export, with the exception of the front matter folder, which comes with the book writing templates. This is attached separately in the compile process. Then there is the research folder. This is where you keep all your research, including text files, PDFs or media files, so that you can view them from within your project. For media files, hover your cursor over the editor to bring up the controls. You can listen to audio files here, as well as view your videos. If you're on a Windows computer, your video will open in your media player and not right inside your Scrivener editor, but I'm sure this feature will be added soon. These are not intended for inclusion in the final draft. You don't have to put all your research files into the research folder though. You can create other folders for your support materials anywhere you want, except inside the draft folder. And lastly, there is the trash folder. This is where you store deleted items until you decide to get rid of them permanently. To delete documents permanently, go to the Project menu and select Empty Trash. This area in the middle is called the Editor. This is where you do all your writing and view the contents of your files. Whatever you have selected in the binder is what you will see in the Editor. You will see documents or folders differently depending on the view mode you have selected in the view mode options in your toolbar. When you have one document selected from the binder and you are in normal text editing view, you see the contents of just that document in the editor and you can click inside it and edit it. As soon as you select more than one document in the binder, Scrivening's mode is automatically triggered with your selected documents stacked in the editor as a composite, one below the other, with horizontal dividers. If you have a folder selected with multiple files inside, you can select corkboard mode in the view mode menu. You will see a corkboard with index cards in the editor. Each index card is virtually attached to the outside of a corresponding document in the binder. You can write synopses on them and drag them around to rearrange them into a different order. For a novel, this would be your initial ideas at the plotting stage, then scenes within a chapter or entire chapters later on. For non-fiction, this would be your headings or subheadings. For a blog, this would be the titles of your blog posts. As you rearrange the cards, the position of the folders or files they are attached to, including any sub-documents inside them, are updated in the binder. 
You can always toggle between view modes using the group mode menu in the toolbar. Then you have a third option, which is a list style view called outlining mode, in which you can see multiple levels of your documents at the same time. I have set a few labels, status stamps and word count targets so that you can see how useful it is to be able to see the status of your entire project at a glance. You can assign different criteria to your labels and status stamps. For instance, you might have a different label color for each character point of view. And you could create a status for each document, such as first draft or needing research. Then, of course, you can check on your word count. Now I'm going to select a document in the binder that has some text inside and set the view mode back to Scrivenings so that I can show you a fourth view mode which blocks out everything except the text you're working on. Yours won't look exactly like this when you first open it because you have to swipe your cursor to the bottom of your screen and adjust some settings in the footer first. This is a great way to work if you like to have a favorite image behind your work or no distractions at all. The inspector window shows extra information associated with the document that you have open in the editor. You have some tabs at the top of the inspector for each of the available inspector functions. I'm using Scrivener 3 for Mac here, so your inspector might be configured a little differently, but the basic principles are the same. For instance, if you have earlier versions of Scrivener, your metadata, including your label and status stamps, will be in the middle of this Notes tab. But in Scrivener 3, labels and status stamps have moved to the bottom of the inspector and are available whichever tab you have open, and your metadata has a tab of its own. At the top of the Notes tab, you'll see a synopsis window representing the virtual index cards which we just saw in corkboard mode. Click on the image icon at the top of the synopsis window to switch to image view and then you can drag an image onto your index card. Then, if you have a folder selected in the binder and switch to corkboard mode, you will see your index cards with their synopses or images giving you an overview of your project. If you switch to the Outliner View mode, you will see your synopses listed below each document title. The synopsis window is currently empty because I haven't written anything on the index card for the chapter folder, but you can see the synopses for all the scene files within it. And if I select any of them, I can edit their synopsis here. If the window is set to Image, you can switch it back to Synopsis by clicking on the Index Card icon at the top of the Synopsis window. When you read your synopses as a list like this, it's easy to see when you need to rearrange documents, which you can also do from within the Outliner. The document's position will update automatically in the binder. In the notes container below, you can attach a note to yourself about the currently selected document. This note will only show when you have the document selected. If I select a different document, the note will disappear, and if I go back to the previous one, it will be back again. This bookmark icon will show a bookmark container where you can store links to other resources on your hard drive or on the internet. This has replaced the Document References tab in previous versions of Scrivener. You can add a document bookmark for the document you currently have selected in the binder, or a project bookmark that will show no matter what document you have selected in the binder. Your bookmark itself could be anything like a document, a PDF or a video, and it can be stored within the project or be linked to someplace outside your project like the internet or elsewhere on your hard drive. The metadata icon opens tabs where you can view and add metadata relating to your document. What metadata does is summarize information about data, which makes finding and working with particular instances of data easier.
you get different kinds of metadata. There's administrative metadata, which provides information about date created, file type, and other technical information. Then you get metadata about containers and how they are put together. Scrivener uses containers called section types, which tell the compile menu how to lay out any documents with that section type assigned to them. For instance, you would have one section type for chapter folders and a different section type for scenes. And when you export the whole manuscript, the compile menu will lay each document out on the page according to its section type. Then you get descriptive metadata, which includes groups, categories, and keywords, which are used for discovery and identification. The camera icon opens a function called snapshots, which is a method of capturing sections of text before editing them so that you can revert to them if you don't like your subsequent edits. To take a snapshot of a document, you click on the plus button. And then, once you've worked on that document, you click on the plus button again to take another snapshot. And then you can select your snapshots from this list and compare them. This last pane is for viewing comments and footnotes that are associated with the text in your editor. These are added within your text by placing your cursor where you want to link the comment or footnote and hitting the comments or footnotes icons in the header bar. The word immediately preceding your cursor will highlight and you can add a comment to it. Now, if you click on the comment or the footnote here in the inspector, it will highlight in the editor and if you click on it in the editor, it will open the inspector pane and highlight it in the comments and footnotes tab. The buttons available will change depending on what sort of document is shown in the editor. For instance, snapshots and comments and footnotes are only available for text documents. In the footer bar, or in older versions of Scrivener in the middle of the Notes tab, you'll find the Label and Status pop-up buttons. You can create and assign labels to your documents as well as status stamps by opening the Edit menu from the drop-down list. These are just tags that you assign to documents if you want to for sorting purposes. Labels have colours assigned to them and keep track of things such as point of view or location. And status stamps keep track of the state of the documents like to do, research or second draft. You can add or remove them by selecting a document and clicking on the drop down menu here or right clicking on the document in the binder and choosing label or status stamp. An asterisk in the corner of one of these buttons indicates that there is content in the associated pane. You can minimize and open any of these containers by clicking on its header bar. You can also resize any of the working areas by hovering your cursor over the boundaries between them until it changes to a double arrow. You can hide the binder by opening the View icon in the toolbar and selecting Hide Binder from the drop-down menu. You can show and hide the inspector by clicking on its icon in the top right of the toolbar. I hope that gives you a better idea of where everything is on the Scrivener user interface and has given you a few ideas about which Scrivener features you want to use for your projects. If you need to learn everything about Scrivener, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can sign up to one of my courses where I walk you through all the functions step by step. If you click on the link below, you can also watch several lessons for free in the curriculum previews and decide if I'm the right teacher for you.